also Machiavelli, seven days. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us on a Friday night. Um, I won't be able to do it, this stream for as long as I normally do the streams. Um, I've got to go do something around 9.30, so I'm going to go ahead and try to get Reggie on the line so we can get the interview going just so I don't have to leave right when they're um, getting started. So, But thank you guys for tuning in for the third night in a row now. Let's see if we can get Reggie on, see if he's, see if he's ready. What up, John? There he is. We're live. I got you on the stream right, right now. Down. Okay. You calling me with six people on the stream? That's okay. They'll be on. Give it. Give it ten minutes, and the, and they'll be and they'll be good okay. for a Friday night. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, I, yeah. I was trying to explain to him I'm on a time crunch tonight, unfortunately. Oh yeah, I was good enough anyway. We just need to do something. We done talked about enough BS for the week anyway. That's that's <laughs> true. That's well, true. We can just do some. Uh, do some content, get some good content about his acting days, mm -hmm. and um, and then we'll be out. Okay. And you just you it's met him about, recently, right? Do you want to tell the backstory about how you how you met him? Uh, well, yeah, I, I'll tell it. Okay. Um, what up, Bomb First Summer? I'm kind of got one eye on this Dodger game. This one one in the night, one out, man on first base. But anyway, I just met him actually this week. Well, we met each other before back in the day. I let y'all tell. I let him tell it how how we met back in the day. So he didn't see me when I was when I was a bad boy. No. <laughs> and I let him talk about those. Okay. Uh, he had to remind me. He was like, you don't remember? I was like, oh man, I, I forget that stuff. But anyway, um, but we just reconnected and 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 started talking. Um. Uh, this weekend we did something with Gabble. Uh, matter of fact, put this up for me. Uh, yeah, while we're talking about this, forward. I don't know if I found the right part to you, but okay. I've got some pictures if you can put that up. But anyway, okay. we did uh did something with Gabo that he, he's trying to work on. He got some investors behind him. They're trying to give Gabo a shot and shop some stuff to some networks. Uh, with Chris Robinson, the guy who did uh, uh, the New Edition story as a director. He directed uh, all the Star series. He, he did a bunch of videos back in the days bunch of Missy Elliott videos and stuff like that. Big Henry said dude named Chris Robinson. So anyway, him and his son got a production company together and they and directed some stuff and they 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 found some interest in the Gabo. Uh well they actually they had found interest in <laughs> well Gabo had hooked us up to him because they're from Baltimore. They had some interest in me and Gene Big Gene deal, but uh Big Gene was demanding a little more than what they wanted to do to shop the program. And so uh, uh, we passed on it. So anyway, so they, they came up with another concept. And, um, you know, me and Gabo being producers on the show. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what happens. Did you get the... Uh, so yeah. We shot did some shooting this week. Uh, we shot some stuff to... So they can shop around to some different um, networks, and um, they they pretty confident that by the first of the year we have a deal in place. And of course, it's got Chris Robinson. He got deals with a uh, BET and Netflix and all of that. So he's not concerned about getting a deal. He said we're gonna get a deal. So that's gonna be good. That's gonna be a very very good look for Gal. Yeah. Um, for Gal, we can Gal and Sam. For those of y'all don't know, Gabo's ass is about six one, six two. That's a tall motherfucker. He do not look like that. But Gabo is a cool down to earth dude. Just like he come across on this video, uh, they done picked that boy off. God, these damn Dodgers, man. They need to go ahead and get swept. They need to get swept. They need to pick off a dude, uh, Corey Bellinger. 
off of first base, kicking off the one out, trying to steal. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, that's what's up with that. Um, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. So what else? What else is new? Mm-hmm. Is uh, not, not is much. GMX or RJ? They they do any any videos today? I I've been working all day. It. Yeah, I did. I didn't look. They haven't, yeah. You know, have to tell us. In the I chat. heard, uh, I heard RJ posted something about three or four in the morning, mm. uh, talking about Kenneth Archer, talking about Kenneth because uh, we were gonna have Kenneth on, mm-hmm. but we're gonna get him and Marker. So, um, but Kenneth ain't said nothing bad, so I don't even know why he wasted his time doing that. Mm. But that's just that's just how RJ do it. And now they walk the man, you know. You <sighs> Dodgers. Two man. Walk in there and man could advance to second place. Second base with no flow. Um, I guess they had a hit and run on the village and probably just jumped jump the gun too soon. Um so that's what's up with that. Um okay. I guess what is it eight thirty? Yeah, it's eight thirty five. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and call him and we go ahead and get it. Okay. Get it going and, and let him just talk. Okay. Right, you know. see what Antoine said. Word say oh yeah Antoine you gotta do some research Antoine. Uh, let's see. Um, talk about what we th- what's the DA? What are we talking about the DA? Who made him Takashi? Who made him famous? Do you like or are you still? I do like it. Um, Machiavelli Seven Days like the first disc. I can't hate on that on that one on that album. I liked it. Um, let's see. Oh. All right, Ball First Family. We got my boy Jermaine on the phone. Uh, y'all know him from the movie Lean On Me, and but while we here and got him on, y'all really know him from uh, his role in Juice, it was Steel, and when he played with your boy Tupac. Uh, I don't know if he'd like to be referred to as Steel, because I know most people say, like, nigga, my name is Jermaine. My mama daddy named me Jermaine. But we, won't call him, we won't call him Steel, but I just want y'all to know who he is. His name is Jermaine, so we're going to call him Jermaine. And so I'm just going to let him go ahead and start talking, and then we'll get into the questions that y'all put up on the board to ask him. He's a great, this nigga is funny as hell. I, I hope he got some drink or some smoke in him so he'll be funnier. But if he don't, <laughs> uh, this, nigga, this nigga is funny, man. He had y'all going. So anyway, I'll just let him talk. He's going to tell y'all some good Tupac stories and... And then I'll try to pull some out of the, all of him that he told me if, if he don't remember. All right, all right go ahead, Jermaine. This is the Bomb well, First Family. Yeah. On the phone with us is my, my partner, John, my homeboy. He's yeah. on the phone with us as well. Yeah, okay. thanks for, okay. thanks for okay. calling in. Man, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on, man. Of course. Okay, well, cool. We'll go ahead and just start talking still. Tell us tell us about your boy, Pac. How you and him when y'all first met? How you... You know, they just love Pac. Talk about you a little bit and what you got working, but they love to hear Tupac stories. And so oh, I never brought anybody man. I never brought anybody on from the movie side. So you the first one from the movie side to be able to tell us something about it. Well that's why I met him at an audition, man. He was auditioning for movie juice. Uh you know, uh we uh they was they was mixing us up, you know, switching us around. You know, seeing who read like what with what group or whatever. But in between sessions, you know, we was in a, you know, in a room and it was holding us all in. 
you know, and next thing you know, we we rapping and going from one thing to the next, man. We turn the audition into pretty much like a hangout, you know, and then, um, you know, we got cool, man, and then we went out and the uh, producers invited us out to dinner and all the last, so we went out and we went to dinner, man. It was just like, y'all invited us because we, we wound up sitting together, eating together, you know, and uh, really kicking it just from the auditions and it kind of like clicked. And that's when they made their mind up when we were the four guys that they was going with. So, you know, uh, you know, me and him and then um, audition, you know, going, you know, uh, back and forth from different reads and whatever, you know, with pop, you know, I was like, oh, okay, it's, this dude ain't, ain't just no regular. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna, he, he, he's, he's, he's gonna uh, definitely, you know, spark, you know, these people's eyes, man, because of the way he was delivering the line and just, you know, it just made it easy for all of us. And that's just why I click like that. But that's when I first met him. Okay, okay. Uh, on the set, on the set, now, you know, I'm, I like to start drama. On the set, did he have any problems with anybody on the set that he didn't really get along with? Or anybody that he really, really did click with? Um, yeah, well, you know, on the set, you know, you got have a problem with Pop today and then tomorrow, it's just like it never happened. Yeah, the next day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So tell us some stories and something way you did. Just, you know, we just love untold stories about Pop that people that don't know about but never heard. Hell, I had problems with Pop, you know, but it really wasn't no problem. It was on some patients and shit like that. My little brother do some shit. You know, he had walked off the set. And you now we were staying at the same hotel. So when I got back to the hotel, I was like, man, you know, David and Neil, man, they done got tired of these antics, man. They done, they said they gonna go ahead and write you out the script, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. So he was like, so when? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, it's going down. You know, it was, oh, man, damn. You know what I'm saying? I guess he thought about that all night, then come to find out it wasn't it wasn't true. When I was coming when I got dropped back to the set, you know, walking up the hill, he come running down the hill. Big chaps, you know, what you want it for? And put his head in my chest and kinda of like swing like, you know, uh uh like hitting my belly but not like, you know, punch me yeah. that hurt me or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? But uh, that's why I say it wasn't really, really wasn't no problem. It was basically, you know, he was mad because I lied and told him that they wrote him. He was fucking with it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, it has to be good times. Oh, okay. How long did it take you to shoot the movie? About? Uh, I think we took Juice was I want to say seven, seven weeks. Or it was probably about between 27 to 14 weeks. You know, because back then, you know, they didn't have the technology that they have now. Yeah. You know, they shoot movies in a the, in the week. <laughs> okay, yeah. And were there any things that uh, we don't know about that, that was, was X'd out that you thought should have probably made the, made the movie? Uh, not that I can remember at this time. Yeah. You know, most of, I think most of what we shot is what they pretty much spice together as far as I can remember. Okay. Um, yeah, um, okay. So, uh, what else? You got any other memories? Yeah. Um, you know, going back and forth to the set, you know, um, uh, he always would be in control of the radio, you know, so he could be listening to something, you know, he was working on or he was listening to, you know, the group R.E.M., you know, uh, that's me in the corner, that's me in the spotlight, that's, <laughs> that's me losing my religion. <laughs> and I remember, you know, we would be going to the set, man, we don't want to hear that, you know. <laughs> Well, not today, Pop. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, 
just his response is that, you know, like, you know, he, he just stuck to it. You know, that's what he felt like was right or what he felt like he wanted to do or whatever. You know, it wasn't just no change in his mind like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, Pac, uh, what type of music? What was he bumping back then? You remember what he was bumping back then on the set? Uh, most of the stuff I remember playing was, you know, like, you know, rock music and, you know, different stuff like that. And then, you know, later on, realizing that that's that's why his music hit such a wide range because he, he wasn't one to just listen to one genre of music and pop wasn't listening to what you would expect pop to be listening to, you know. So, and I don't know if that was the artist in him that, you know, didn't want to, you know, listen too much to him you know, what was out right now or what other than his stuff and, you know, and, and listening to stuff that he can actually grab and get different ideas from or whatever. So, yeah, he always was, was playing some different shit. <laughs> oh, okay. So, one of the subscribers by the name of Big Time said, did you know uh, they changed up the ending on the Blu-ray that they released? You said what now? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, they changed up the ending of Juice on the Blu-ray that they uh, on the Blu-ray that they released on DVD. Do you know that? Oh, they changed the ending. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I wasn't aware. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't aware. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Can you tell us like about uh, about Reggie? About your first time meeting Reggie back in the day? You said what now? The first time you met Reggie back in the day? I told him that we had met really before last a couple of days ago. We were telling each other something we met. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think, I think, as uh, far as I remember, I think when I met Reggie, it was, you know, from a, from, from a distance, like, you know, on some, probably more so on some look on, because, you know, Pops was familiar with, you know, uh, uh, Shug and you know uh, a lot of the a lot of the jokers and stuff that was from out there. So I would be around, you know, uh, be with be with be with pops and you know just be seeing different cats or you know I might see Shug, might see Pac or see Reggie and Shug together, something like that, like you know out in Vegas and stuff. But uh, I always kind of like you know played my lane, you know. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me go to the boys. Okay. Oh yeah. Somebody said. Um, do you know? Which I think it's probably obvious that uh, they made him do it. But if you know any insight about why they changed the movie poster from him holding the gun to, I guess they edited the gun out or they changed the photo on it. Do you remember that for the well? Yeah, at that time they just felt like you know, uh, you know, four black guys on a, on a flyer, yeah. on a movie poster holding a gun, was way more of a threat than you know, Christian mm -hmm. Slater, you know, uh, uh, one of these cats at the time that was on the cover uh, of, of, of of feature films, you know, uh, holding bigger guns. You know, so uh, for whatever reason, they felt like, okay, well, let's just, you know, kind of like X the gun out and go with, you know, the four guys on the cover without the gun. Gotcha. Uh, but that's 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 basically what it was, you know. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I guess it was a, a, a marketing call, you know, uh, at the time that was uh, pretty much above our pay grade. Okay. You know, so, you know, we pretty much had to go with it, but... Yeah. You know, we we explain that in a lot of the interviews and stuff. Okay. You know, Pac used to always use that analogy. If uh, you got four black guys walking down the street with baseball bats, you know what I'm saying, and then across the street you got four white guys walking down the street with a baseball bat, which ones did you figure was a gang and which ones did you figure was going to play baseball? Mm. You know, and, and, and that, that right there kind of like, you know, struck a lot of chords with, you know, people because it made you really stop and think like, wow, 
you know, if I was to see that, you know, and, and you know, of all nationalities, you know, you think and you stop and you think and you say, damn, maybe I would have looked at it that way. Maybe I, maybe I do buy into the stereotype, you mm-hmm. know, so. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. be- before the movie came out, um, did you do a lot of the, you know, they do like the press tours where they do the interviews with, with all the people like the movie critics and all that stuff for, for different newscasts. Did you do that? And if so, did you do that with Pac? Uh, well, I believe we went, we did a, we did a tour, a promotional tour, mm-hmm. uh, that I remember, uh, I mean, we did a lot of interviews together. I mean, but, uh, uh, for the promotional tour, I think, uh, they put me and Khalil together mm-hmm. and Omar and Pop together. And they sent okay. them one way, they sent us another way. Gotcha. So, you know, yeah, it was, it was we, we, but we did a lot of, you know, we did a lot of interviews just on, on, on the set, mm-hmm. you know, every, every chance, every, every time. And it felt like every time you look up, it's sitting down being interviewed by, you know, somebody different. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And this was uh was Tupac's first movie, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, or, or one of his ones with the with where he was in a prominent role. Was this your first bigger movie or no? Uh, Lean on Me was my uh, first big movie. Okay, okay. Did and, he um, did he turn to you for advice during the filming of this? Um, uh, I think it's been times when in it with different scenes. That we all kind of uh, came together and got e- advice from each other, at, you know, one time or another, because bringing those uh, that dialogue off the pages and mm-hmm. into actual reality to a, you know, to a, to a, to film a scene, you know, not all the time you can bring it out as read, you know, as it's been written, you know, in the script. So we would have to put our heads together. You know, you know. Okay, well, that ain't gonna work this way, or mm-hmm. let's do that, this, that. But uh, yeah, from time to time, we would look to each other. Okay. You know, all four of us would look to each other for different advice or give you by advice. You know, in the scene, you know, we, you know, we we directed us. You know, uh, with 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 Ernest. You know, mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, we we all we all took advice from each other. Okay. All right, go go ahead, Reggie. Sorry. Uh, Heidi, you want to know: Have you seen or talked to Ernest Dickerson? Uh, yeah, I've spoke to Ernest. Uh, and speaks to Ernest uh, from time to time. It's been uh, not too long since I spoke to Ernest. I talked to Khalil. You know, it's not been too long since I spoke to them, but they are a phone call away. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, somebody keep asking about: Did, did you play in the movie Bullet? Yeah, I played a bullet as well. You know, I did two movies with Pop. Uh, that was the that was that bullet we did that year. You know, after after we did Juice, you know, uh, which felt like years. You know, at that time, but uh, yeah, man, we had a good time with that one. Uh, with, with with Mickey Rourke, uh, you know, we uh, it gave me an opportunity to. You know, because at, at, at that time, by that time, Pac had done, you know, pretty much, you know, made a, made a household name for himself. And being able to, you know, then now be with Pac, that's the Pac now, opposed to the Pac when we were doing Juice. You know, it, it was a little different, but, you know, he was he was the same, you know, same, same Pac, you know what I mean? So, so we had a good time. Yeah. When was the last time you saw Pop? Last time I saw Pop, I want to say the last time I saw Pop was in Vegas at the uh, at the at, at, at Club uh, at the Six Two Club at the Six Six Two, uh, sitting outside in the Rolls Royce, and it was almost like, you know, uh, you know, he was in the. I don't want. I'm not gonna say a trans, but. You know, just really absorbing it all. You know, sitting outside. I think they had a couple of them out there, but you know, a lot of the fans and stuff was out there. And you know, him and uh, 
couple of other cats was, you know, just sitting in the car. And, you know, I me, mean, I always, you know, play the, play the background or whatever. So, you know, I was just watching and then I, you know, I walked over to the car and told them what's up and everything. And uh, if they was getting into anything later, I'll be around or whatever. You know, we'll see him later. So he was like cool and, you know, went back to doing him and, you know, me and my, my crew, we went ahead and pushed and finished, for, finished playing the Vegas nightlife. And so just so y'all know, this was the time before uh, he got shot in Vegas that he's talking about. This was the, the time before that, that night, uh, that the, the Tyson fight before that. Is what he's talking about. Right, right. It wasn't. It wasn't the same. Uh, it, that wasn't the same night that uh, he got shot. Cause it was fire. You know. We always ask everybody to come on on, on the phone, and we like to know what is your favorite. Uh, you did a special session. Your favorite top song. Your favorite top song. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Jermaine. I said we always ask every uh, person to come on the show. What was your favorite uh, Pac album, and then what was your favorite Pac song? Um, uh, me, uh, uh, Machiavelli, I like that. Uh, and uh, Hail Mary was one of my favorites. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. Uh, Omar saw him in Vegas the night he was shot. Okay, so I'm telling us Omar talked about that. Okay, um, you, you have any more funny pop stories or memories of pop? Anything funny? Uh, no, not that I can think of right off hand. You know, these are you know years ago and. Uh, yeah. There was so much time that we we spent together with filming those movies that uh I re- well it was another time I smoked all the herb up on the set of Bullet you know <laughs> uh, he had to go on the set when we was in his trailer chilling you know and shit, and bug we was about to roll up and he had to go by the time he came back I had to roll the burnt and getting ready for my scene I'm mad at that. Big times, I you smoke a whole fucking weed, man. I'm about to run around. Oh, man, man, pipe down, pipe down. I got somebody else coming. You know, but uh, you ain't care nothing about that. You know? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Hello? John? Yeah, hello? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's see. Go to the board and see if anybody. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Yeah. All right. That's about it. <laughs> no, we got a couple of more questions. <laughs> we got a couple of more questions. Uh. Oh, okay. We just we were just trying to read. You know, we we having a lot of people repeating questions and stuff. So we're just trying to read the uh, you know, the questions and stuff. So uh, uh, we'll talk about Gav, Gav, uh, the show. Oh, yeah. What you think? You think that's gonna be that's gonna work pretty good for us? Uh, I mean, I would hope so. Uh, well, he definitely has a lane um, that you know he can come with. Uh, I don't want him to uh, limit himself. Uh, I think if uh, you know he keep going like he's going now, and you know uh, doing you know. Uh, the next one will be Biggie, then Aaliyah, and then, you know, on, so on and so forth. You know, uh, he hit a, 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 a more wider range of, uh, you know, of, of people, uh, you know, that can relate to the different artists. So I think he, I think, I think the show is going to do well. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. Hey, um, okay. Tell us a little bit about you. What you working on? What you been, what you been doing? Uh, well, um, I sit on the board of directors for the Academy of the Gifted in, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, which is a school where we teach, uh, kids of different arts, different, you know, uh, behind the scene, uh, business, stage management, you know, producing, um, 
of course, acting and singing and, you know, dancing, uh, you know, instruments and stuff like that. So, you know, we kind of, uh, you know, focus on the kids and letting them uh, explore their, you know, uh, unknown talents until they, you know, start doing things. You'd be amazed on these kids and what they can do when they're able to put in a position in a, uh, a situation where they can express that. Uh, we also uh, I'm starring in a play called The Lean On Me Boys, uh, which is uh, sponsored by the Academy of the Gifted. Uh, we just got picked up and be going on tour for that in January. Uh, I'm uh, also looking to do uh, my movie Tears and uh, look like I have a partnership deal. I don't want to go into details on okay. that okay. until we get everything pretty much finalized, but uh, things looking like that's going in the upward uh, direction you know, where I'm able to bring in the cast that I'm trying to bring in because at the level uh, and uh, the uh, time that I have, you know, experience and everything in the business, I just, you know, when I do a movie, it has to be like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? It can't just be, you know, just, oh, man, you know, my man Rodney from, uh, you know, uh, 4th Street, man, he he made a movie, his movie looked just as good as your name. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, not that it can't be done, but I just, you know, it's just a little more pressure on me. The expectations, you know, for me are, are a little bigger than, you know, uh, what it would be for us, you know, for somebody that may have not, you know, uh, worked with the people that I work with and uh, long as uh, I've been in the business. So, uh, we're looking, looking uh, forward to, you know, producing a great film uh, it, it's called Tears, and, uh, you know, it's it's definitely uh, one of those that we're going to be like, wow, you know, one of those uh, 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 movies like Law Abiding Citizens, you know, where, 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 where we can see us in a, in a whole di- different level, different light, you know, the backdrop of the, of the whole whole story is, is different, but it comes from a familiar place, you know, so. Okay. That's uh that's pretty much uh what I've been wrapping okay. my time up with, you know. Okay. So and my uh, family. Yeah, your family, yeah. Uh you ride motorcycles, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what bike you ride? Uh I love riding, I ride a Harley. Okay. Uh road glide, um coast to coast, you know, um, ground pounder to the fullest man. Shout out to King to the South M C. Um, you know, I've been uh, dealing with this motorcycle thing, man, since the youngster, because, you know, Pops and, you know, all his boys rode bikes. So when I got out to the West Coast, you know, I'm, you know, I was always thinking, you know, Harley Davidson, man, I smoke, man, stuff, man, I, I ain't messing with that, man, you know, I'm good, you know, and uh, Pops finally took me out to the set, and I got to meet some younger cats with some fly hogs, and I'm like, you know what? I would love to ride some shit like that, <laughs> you know, and it changed, it changed my whole uh, perspective, man. And uh, as soon as I was able to get me one, I went and got me one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, wise up, you must wasn't listening. He just told us about a story when he smoked up all pop stuff. <laughs> he said they were always in the uh, in the trailer blowing. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's what they were doing. You know, it's a hurry up the way business. Yeah. Yeah, hurry up and wait. Yeah. <laughs> Let it run in the trailer. That's what Pac did most of his right. Was he writing in the uh, trailer then? Was he writing music? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he would always be writing. You know, I would like to think some of the stuff that, you know, he would be in the corner writing in between times and on the, on the, on the a van going back and forth to the hotel and some of the music that he did today, you know, uh, you know, was was from that. Maybe he even wrote Brenda had a baby on a set of juice. You would never know because he was always writing. Yeah. You know, the boy was a creative machine. Yeah. Yeah, boy, uh, um, uh, Money D was still telling us how, how he was, he was the one really uh, auditioning for the parts that you, you, you end up getting. And um, that's what made him practicing with Pop, from practicing with the, the, the role of Bishop. And uh, that's how Pac ended up getting the, the job, and and you end up taking this job from him, <laughs> and you beat him out. So I'm going to be in trouble yeah, about that. Know. Yeah. God, you know, God has his, you know, his plans for everybody, everybody huh? Yeah. Right, man. You know, every, everything is, is already written out. We just living it out. 
you know, so uh, it was just, you know, uh, the opportunity that, you know, you know, uh, that God set forth for us for uh, to make the impact that we uh, that we did. And I'm blessed to be able to have two movies that's uh, in the uh, top 20 greatest movies of all time. Okay. You know, and uh, one of them is, uh, you know, Juice with, with, with Tupac. The other one is Rain On Me. So, you know, uh, you know, able to just work with him was an honor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> was, was, was definitely an honor. He brought, he brought things out of, out of me on the set and off the set that, you know, I didn't even know I had in me. And I learned from him, yeah. you know, and I learned from him. Yeah. Did y'all, uh, you ever, uh, you ever do anything with any females together? Anything you can talk about? No, I'm not talking with him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, cool. You got, you got any more questions for, for my boy, uh, Jermaine? Um, let's see. Let's see what these people are talking about. Hey. Um, yeah, somebody asked what you thought about, um, like how you heard when Pac passed away. And what your thoughts on are about the the legacy that he left when he passed? Oh, uh, I didn't hear that. Can you say yeah, some somebody on the board asked um, how you found out about when Pac passed away and what your reaction was, and what you think about the legacy that he left when when he passed. Uh, I believe I got a, a phone call. I believe I was staying in North Hollywood at the time and got a phone call about it and turned on the news and, and there it was. And um, once he once he passed on, that was the news about him being shot. And once they said Pac had died and passed, it was just like, you know, I just I just felt like it was a, a major it was a major loss, not just for our people, but, you know, uh major law as far as uh, entertainment wise because he was so talented, so gifted with his writing and, you know, with his music that touched so many people and everything. So, you know, it was it was a loss. Another relationship uh at uh, I had to bear, you know, basically, uh loss of and it was it's been plenty in the business. I mean, you know, uh, Lamont Bentley from Moesha, Red Fox, you know, uh, my writer Shepherd, you know, so I've, I've, I've dealt with death in this business from, you know, people that I don't work with and, you know, established relationships with. I mean, my relationship with Red Fox was just as tight as it was with Morgan Freeman you know, uh, especially on a set, you know, so, uh, just, just knowing him and, you know, uh, once that happened, it was just like, damn, this is, here we go again. You know, for me, it's different, you know, for the fans, they lost the artist. For me, I lost a friend, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah, that was pretty much what we was at with it. Uh, CD, want to ask you, um, if you remember this, why did Tupac have two guns on him after him and Raheem uh, was arguing about the gun? Or was that a, a error in the movie? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, two guns. Um, yeah, what's the name you talking about? Yeah, he has to retype that. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, cool, Jermaine. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, uh, you know, uh, give us this little interview. Not a little interview, this is a big interview for us. <laughs> you taking your time to do this. And, uh, and man, you know, you know, I'm going to be keeping contact with you, I'll stay in, co in touch with you. And for I know sure. it's laid out there. And so uh, I appreciate you taking your time to do this for me, man. 
Hey, man, appreciate you having me, man. Appreciate you having me, man. And, uh, yeah. you know, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, I will, man. I'm going to stay in contact with you, so. so okay, yeah, we'll come cool, out here man. in Cali, man. Hook me up. We're going to hang out. That's what it do. That's what okay. it do. I'm looking forward, bro. All right, man. All right, All right cool. y'all be easy. Y'all have a good one. Right. Thanks. All right. I know I was off my game because I was looking at these that dog on Dodgers. <laughs> and, I was, and I, man, hey, y'all see that, that throw by Corey Dillinger? Man. Yeah, that saved us because this game would be over. He wouldn't have threw that, that shot. But anyway, that's cool. Um, I thought y'all would give me a little bit more, um, a little bit more um, questions. Uh, y'all wasn't helping me. Cause I didn't know much about yeah. about Jermaine other than Juice, yeah. <laughs> and y'all wasn't helping me at all about that. But it's cool. Um, he's a good dude. I really like him. Um, he was really funny. I don't know if he would have something else on his mind on his mind, or he was he was a little he was a little off his game. I think, but mm-hmm. that could have been me too because I was <laughs> I was a little distracted, getting mad at the Dodgers until Corey Bellinger threw that shot. To get that boy out, to get that double play. But anyway, uh, so it's cool. I'm glad he took the time to do that for us. Uh, uh, yeah. We got him in the roller deck, so we'll get him. I'll get back on my game. I'm sure y'all will, will think of some things and put it in the comments and say, y'all should act in this, y'all should act in that. And then I'll get him back on to talk to him. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so that was about Park with some movies. So that's just some more content for us to have, you know. Mm-hmm. Got some somebody that he did a movie script with and all that. I didn't even know that Parkway did Bullet with him. I didn't know that until uh, yeah, I brought that up. That. I don't think I ever yeah, watched so. Bullet after the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I didn't know that. Um, Clay Legend came um, in and got, got everybody all wrong. Yeah, he got everybody all messed up. Yeah, he's not late. Yeah. 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 Came in, fucked shit up, and left. <laughs> That's all right, though. Yeah, he ain't left. He's still listening. <laughs> <laughs> He's still listening. Lay Legend is a big old kid. He don't mean no harm. Don't mean no harm. He don't mean no harm. He just, you know, crazy like everybody else with that bullshit. I, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even, you know what? I'm convinced these niggas don't believe that shit. I used to think when I first met him that he believed it. He don't believe that shit. He believe it a lot more than Tanika. Yeah. Gal, I don't even Gal don't even talk. I said Gal, leave that alone. Don't even talk to me about that. You definitely don't believe that shit. But um, Tanika don't believe it either. Tanika's just trying to figure out which one is more profitable. You know? yes. <laughs> and, and most of the friends, and most of his people or his subscribers are are they legend subscribers and Gal. So that's why yeah. he pushes that. But Tanique definitely don't believe that. And they left in the stop. I don't think he believes in it anymore either. So, cool. Um, got anything else to talk about? Oh, good hit. Monkey, get out of the park. Damn. Round will double. Okay, we can take that. A two out double. All right, somebody. Yeah, you know, two outs in the tent. It's in the tent now. So we'll see. But, um, yeah. Uh, so cool. Why Why is the layout the brotherhood? It's not my, it's not my business to speak on that. I don't even know why I read that question. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. It's not my place to speak on that. Like I said, I'm cool with everybody. <laughs> I ain't got no problem with nobody. Um, I got enough people that hate me, so I ain't, I ain't, hey, we get shit worked out. I, I try to be the peacemaker on shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, good to see Drayston. Yeah, yeah, I saw Drayston on Vlad, huh? He did, uh, with Vlad, um, Drayston, um, what's his name? Um, B B G knockout. They did a double one together. Oh, okay. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, Detroit Prince. Prince. Is that what you're talking about? 
we can get Trace to on. If y'all want Trace to get Trace to on, I just didn't, didn't think. They think anybody about it, but I got Trace the phone number. Me and Trace are cool, so if I want to get Trace to on, let me know. We'll do Trace to one day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, he's looking good. Mm. Yeah. I just didn't think y'all want to do Trace to because then you have some type of sexual case. That he got, got went to jail for. I don't know. Somebody always said something in the boards. Oh, I don't, okay. remember what it was. I don't know what he went to jail for, so I don't even want to put that bag on him. I hate that I did. I said that, but I thought that's why. That's why I never even tried. Well, people would say that on the board. I think that's where you, where you, oh. yeah, where you where you heard that because people would say, "Oh, don't get Dracer because," and then they'd say something, which I don't know if it's true or not. Oh, honest. okay. Trayvon uploaded a picture. Yeah, yeah. John, send a picture. Trayvon, um, and y'all, y'all give out Trayvon Instagram again, but let that picture. These are the three guys. Damn, boy. God damn, man. Fucked up? Put that picture with that Trayvon upload I sent to you today. Okay. Let's see. These are the three guys of the, uh, that was at the, uh, at the um, Lakewood Mall incident that, that some people try to say never happened or was set up or a lie or whatever. But Trayvon put a picture up on his Instagram and they talking about that. So, uh, and these three guys are still real close these days. I think it's Mo, K-Dub, who y'all heard from before. I did an interview with K-Dub. And, um, and Trey were the three. These are the three guys. Yeah. Okay, that's up. Okay. Yeah, so um, Trey, Trey, I told y'all, you've been, um, you been working this Instagram real good. Um, mm-hmm. So y'all go over there and holler at Trey. I'm telling y'all. I heard about his Instagram page from Bomb First, and he didn't need to bring his ass back on Bomb First to do an interview. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I don't know. I I I sent it to most of y'all. John, you mind putting up that picture uh, with Shell? Tell him where he was, where he's at. Oh yeah, I can do that. One second. Yeah. Yeah, you told him last night though before before it got out there. Yeah. Oh, we had knew. I just couldn't remember the name, but and then my boy, he tried to backtrack on it, <laughs> but he had already told me. I just couldn't think of the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name at the time. He had already told. He had already told me he had got moved when he was there. He just, I guess, he didn't want to say it over there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what shows that. Um, that's like a reception center, though. And um, so he'll be there. He won't be staying there that long. He'll be there probably about 30 days. Um, JMX doesn't have uh, that interview. He definitely won't be getting that interview now because the accent, administration segregation is, is, is where you go when you first get put in. And that's where they go and tell you um, how long you're going to do, what you need to do, what's wrong with you, if you got any medical problems, which he does. Okay, so we're gonna send you to this prison because you got the medical problems. Uh, you know, are you in any gangs? So mm-hmm. since you claiming to be a blood or a power rule or something like that, or we think you are a blood or a power rule, then we're gonna put you at this location and not this location. So they do stuff like that. Um, and so they're gonna be evaluating them for the next uh, thirty days. Mm-hmm. Then after that he'll he'll go to where he's gonna stay. Probably. Huh? After the thirty days he'll probably go to where he stays. Yeah, and then thirty days he'll get transferred to the um to to you know to his facility until he go there and get tired there and get in some trouble there moving. Yeah. And he gonna go up and down on his levels. He probably start off as a level three or level four, 
just because of the crime and the time. Mm-hmm. But his ultimate goal is to eventually get down to a level two. Yeah. Where you can, you know, where. But then you don't want to get into a level two or level one because shit, those are like dorms. Mm. And you want to be in at least a two man cell. Um, you don't want to be in a dormitory shit. So, anyway. Um, so that's what's up. Yeah, she, 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 she was kind of looking age, you know. But here's it. Once you get into the, uh, the, the get out of the county jail system, which he just got transferred that night, and he get, you know, start getting his packages and stuff like that. Um, he will get himself back looking good, get his beer, you know, get a diet and all of that. He'll be, he'll be back looking good. He'll be all right. Shit will be all right. So, uh, so that's what's up with the big home. Um, let's see what else. So we talked about trade. We talked about that. Uh, what else we got to talk about? Um, so I guess that's about it. Um, so yeah, so next week, uh, what day is the 20th? What day is the 20th? What day is the 30th? Is that Wednesday? Let's see. I broke open the calendar. 30th yeah. is, uh, Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a stream probably Wednesday. Talk about uh how the interview went with Vlad and what he asked me about. And then uh, I'll do something with Kenneth and uh, Marcus. If nothing hot or pressing come up before Monday. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll plan for Wednesday. And so, uh, you yeah. know. What else? Any questions? We'll take questions for about nine minutes, then we're going to let John go, but John got to go work. Do some work. Um, so we'll do about nine minutes if I got any questions, because I know that I've been missing a lot of good questions when I be talking bullshit and stuff. Uh, I see Glenn always messes, <laughs> messes up on the Tupac facts. Yeah. Yeah. They watch him out for that. Boy, y'all love putting that police stuff with Vlad. <laughs> I guess I get arrested after that deal, and then it's uh, definitely going to be facts that that nigga's the police, huh? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what up, Kate King Third? How you doing? Uh, what up, Patty? Reggie, you? you must come on after the Vlad. Yeah. Yeah, I would try to do that on Wednesday. Hopefully, John will be available. Yeah. Do they sell death row hoodies? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it was a company that had a, a, a merchandise deal with death row. I'm sure if you go on the on the website, you should be able to find one. I had seen some T-shirts in Walmart at one time. Mm. I know uh, E1 is doing something. Go on E1. I got to find out from Alan what's that website because. We had just signed off. I had just got Joe Cool and Risky to sign off oh, for some yeah. artworks. It's some so artworks. So I know they were putting some t-shirts on. It's deathrowmusic.com. Deathrowmusic.com. Yep. So that's simple. So yeah. So go to deathrowmusic.com and you can, should be able to find some merchandise there. Yeah, they have hoodies and hats and shirts and all that stuff. I found out from Molly a couple of weeks ago because I had somebody that bought a merchandising deal to me for some park stuff uh-huh. or some some dials and i found out that the estate did sell their rights uh for merchandising to uh to one company mm. uh, on the tupac stuff uh, um, well that might be true they might have did, did that publishing deal that somebody was saying about but if they gave up the merchandising right that don't mean they wouldn't have gave up uh, uh, which it wouldn't make sense to me i, I just don't understand that that's yeah. Right. yeah. Um, let's see. <clears throat> what else? Thanks, Tanya. Are you cool? Big time. Thanks for the question, Big Tanya. You saved me with a couple of them. Is Middletown Mike talking shit to Do I? I'm but now Middletown cool. Okay. Um, Golden State Warriors got the finals. <laughs> well, that 
That ain't no mystery around here. I don't think they're going to do a three-peat, though. I ain't wishing for them to do a three-peat, even though I do like them. But I don't want them to do a three-peat. And if the Lakers get their stuff together and get a good a good player in January, February, like I think they, they are, I'm going to be rooting for them. But I think they're going to get a big man. Magic going to pull off a big man by then. Why he didn't give that money to Cousins, I still don't know. I would have gave Cousins $5 million. Yeah. I would have given that to him in a heartbeat. I don't know what they were thinking about. Well, Sean, you are obsessed with Lay Legend. Every every single thing you have on here is about Lay Legend. And he's not even in here anymore. What are you saying? You talking shit to him or are you talking him up? No, I'm talking shit to him. Oh, he is, he is still in here. Yeah, Lay yeah. Legend, what's up, Lay Legend? Why are you messing with the people, Lay Legend? What you talking about? Oh, yeah. Lay Legend, when you going to talk to Sugar again? Uh, it's going to be about 30 days now, I think. I think it's going to be about 30 days before anybody can talk to him. If it ain't an attorney visit or something like that. But we'll see. We'll see if that $10,000 bet, if I should have took it. Because if he don't do nothing in 30 days, y'all know he don't have an interview. <laughs> Maybe that, I'm going to ask him the first question I'm going to ask you. When he calls, it's going to be, I'm going to say, men ladies, they want to know, why do you keep saying Tupac's alive when you know he's he's not alive anymore? That's going to be the first, first question I'm going to ask. So. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm going to Yeah. Oh, so that's going to be the first question. Well, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all. So, uh, y'all have a good weekend. And, um, so Halloween night right there, bad night like now. Y'all should be finished trick or treating with the kids by 8 30, 9 o'clock. So, yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll play by here. See how it's going. Well, Y'all have a good one. Yeah. Thanks for turning. All right. All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. Thanks, Reg. Hold on, baby. Hold on.